Uh, welcome everyone for today's webinar. Uh, happy Halloween to everyone. We have an awesome lineup of uh, speakers for today's session um, on the topic of uh, reimagining onboarding using automation and AI. Um, we have Jennifer Kilgo from Zealous, Adam Moore from Atlassian, and Carolyn Adams from Modus Create to share their point of view, perspective, and lessons learned from their recent implementation. Before we get started, a couple of quick housekeeping rules. Um, please mute your microphones so that you know we avoid any static and, and uh, uh, background noise. Um, turning the video on is optional. We do encourage it to have a good, lively collaboration. Um, Feel free to put your questions in the chat window in the bottom so that way we can queue up with the right uh, uh, um, um, uh, speakers to give their feedback. Um, also, please note the webinar is being recorded and we will share the recording by next week to all the registered the participants. With that, let's get into it. Welcome, Jennifer. Uh, you know, we are really eager to have you give your um, 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 uh, point of view. So let me share my screen and we will we'll get the uh, topic going. Um, one more, uh, just from an agenda perspective, uh, we have Jennifer giving an overview of Zealous in around 10 minutes plus. Then we have Adam to give an overview of uh, Atlassian Robo and the new and the latest features, followed by Carolyn and I uh, walking through the best practices and how we do these type of implementations. With that, over to you, Jennifer. Uh, walk us through your implementations, lessons learned, and, and your perspective on the implementation. Absolutely. Thank you, Prabhu. So I'm um, Jennifer Kilgore from Zealous. I'm the director of operations. My team owns our Atlassian ecosystem. I've been in the healthcare industry for around 15 years. The last three and a half have been with Zealous. And prior to that, I came from an EHR company. During the course of my three and a half years that I've been at Zealous, we've acquired a few companies. And anytime you're a part of a merger and acquisition, tool consolidation is a big, big aspect of that. So next slide, please. So one of the things that we've tried to do at Zealous is tool consolidation and process improvement. So that's where we're really going to focus here. So during the course of our mergers and acquisitions, we were fortunate that these organizations were already using Atlassian products. We just needed to consolidate that. In order to do that, we partnered with Modus Create to help us with our transformation and migration efforts. And then we have our use case that we're going to talk through for the implementation of kind of how we did that and what we um, have partnered with Onward for as well. So next slide, third slide, really. Next one, talk through that. There we go. And Caroline, this is where you come in. It would help if I was unmuted. Hi, everyone. I'm Caroline Adams. I'm from Modus Create, and I helped Jennifer and her team implement uh, a onboarding solution for Zealous. Mm -hmm. um, to, Jennifer already gave a little overview of Zealous' situation. They had a lot of mergers and acquisitions and were consolidating tools. Zealous selected Jira Service Management as their primary tool for request management. And part of this included talking about HR service management. Now, consolidating these systems is by no means a simple feat. Um, it took uh, a lot of effort uh, on their part and ours to do this. So I wouldn't say that this is an easy process, but there is a lot that can be done using Jira service management out of the box that actually helps get you started. Um, beyond Jira service management though, Zealous had a particular use case in mind. They wanted it to integrate with Workday and they wanted it to integrate with their other systems. So the idea that we had was to take Workday and when a person is marked as hired in Workday, that would automatically trigger the creation of a Jira service management ticket and all of the associated tasks with that ticket. So imagine if you would, um, someone getting marked as hired, and then the next thing you know, 
HR and HRBP has a ticket saying, hi, um, this person has been marked as hired. Please confirm their employee details. Once they've confirmed all of their employee details, that ticket gets marked as done. And that creates a cascade of additional tool uh, of additional uh, issues uh, for IT, for facilities, for procurement, for legal all, to do all of their different pieces. It's coordinating. It's a symphony uh, that's being that's been well orchestrated to make a beautiful sound for this organization. So, uh, let's talk about some tangible benefits that Zealous saw. Um, Jennifer, correct me if I'm wrong, but it was taking upwards of a month to get new laptops to employees at times um, when uh, when they were starting. And now I hear people are complaining, but they're complaining about something different, right? They're complaining mm -hmm. that they're getting their laptops too soon mm -hmm. before their start date, which is a great problem to have. That is true, Caroline. Spot on. Um. So what all of this meant was that it meant to increases in productivity. It meant to a decrease in technical debt. It led to the replacement of ServiceNow and it reduced reliance on middleware and support resources. Got it. Next slide. Oh, we already covered this one, Prabhu. Yep. I think then, uh, uh, thank you. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you, Carolyn. Um, mm -hmm. Couple of questions, right? Um, I know you, Jennifer, you mentioned about, uh, you know, consolidation and M&A, right? Um, what was the e existing environment? Any insights you can shed on? How was the environment before you get started on Jira service management and automation? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So we have had a total of four different instances of JIRA. Uh, a lot of different uses. We had two data center environments. We had two cloud environments. So we were all looking to merge together. JIRA service management usage was kind of sporadic, wasn't consistent across teams. There were um, teams that were you still using email. They weren't relying on the tool set that we'd already invested money in. So we were able to, through process improvement, introduce Jira service management to different areas of our organization and bring them on board. Our human resources department or um, people and culture, as we call them at Zealous, they were one of the first groups that we were able to bring on through our people and culture connect. And it's been very successful. Our legal team, our procurement teams, teams that hadn't thought to use Jira service management previously are now using the tool and looking to connect in other ways. Excellent, excellent. Um, you you covered the past, you covered the present. Give us any insights into the future. You know, um, you know, I have to ask this question. You know, where does AI sits in? Have you guys piloted AI? What's your take on um, you know, uh, the future with respect to JSM and other projects you just mentioned? Absolutely. We're currently exploring all the options. Our legal team's kind of coming through everything because we're still merging everything together. Um for a few of our different business units. We haven't turned it on just yet, but we are so excited to start exploring and we're excited to start trying Brevo and AI in the future. Excellent, excellent, perfect. With that, it's a, it's a good good transition to um, uh, Adam Moore. Um, uh, Adam uh, is, is a principal product manager uh, responsible for Atlassian Rovo. Uh, you know, there is no conversation today that is without AI and specifically AI agents. Um, so Adam, over to you, please. Um, you know, we are excited to learn from you on um, Atlassian Rovo and the latest uh, features that you could show us. Awesome. All right. Well, thanks for that uh, professional transition, Prabhu. Uh, and yeah, that's right. I'm here. I'm happy to talk about AI to anyone who will listen. Um, and yeah, because we've come a long way at Atlassian the last year and a half, uh, you know, from our first handful of, of AI features, there's now over 30 different uh, AI features across our product suite, including JSM. And, you know, there's more features every month, uh, which is really, really cool. And of course, earlier this month, we went to general availability with Rovo, which is our new AI powered product 
which sort of together with the Atlassian intelligence features is really leaning into how AI can sort of change how teams are getting work done. Um, but fundamentally, AI is only as good as the data that is available to it. And so sort of where we have the special advantage with Atlassian is what we call the teamwork graph. And, you know, we have all your, your projects, your knowledge, your support tickets. Um, and as your businesses have grown, uh, so has your knowledge graph. And so, yeah, we're super excited about what AI can do on top of that um, to sort of bring great benefits to your businesses. And of course, there's the usual, uh, I guess, challenges people have with UI, uh, AI, you know, what model should we use? Is it safe to use? Where's our data going? Is it being used for training models? Um, and that's sort of all challenges that we're addressing with, with both Atlassian Intelligence and Rover, because we want to make all that really simple. Um, we tap into industry leading models, you know, we're trying out new models all the time and we'll use the best models for the best use case. Uh, we make sure that they meet our high standards for security and privacy, uh, including zero data retention rather. Um, and yeah, we just don't want you to have to worry about this stuff. We just want to give you great features and great experiences. Uh, and we're also sort of providing that to our app ecosystem as well, where we've been working with Onward. Uh, and others, uh, which is really exciting. So this is just one of my favorite newer features in Atlassian Intelligence, uh, which is page catch-ups. Um, I'm sure you know, you're all looking at a lot of documentation all the time and updating it and sort of being able to get AI to just tell you what's happened and what's changed in a page since you've last seen it is really powerful. And it can actually link you to that actual section that it's that's kind of summarizing so you can see. So no more flipping through sort of old versions of, of pages. Uh, AI makes it super easy um, for you. And then now we have Rovo as well. Uh, and so what does it actually do? Uh, it's basically based around sort of three critical activities that any knowledge worker needs to do uh, in any team. And so first is around unlocking knowledge with a world-class enterprise search experience uh, and quickly helping you find what you need to do your work. Uh, then on top of that, there's a bunch of tools to help you learn and gain insights from sort of more complex information and data sets. And finally, ACT, uh, that's where the Rovo agents come in that, that Prabhu mentioned, and that's about your ability to act on the information quickly and effectively. And so agents are like virtual teammates or experts at completing um, complex processes, solving challenging problems, uh, and managing away some of those repetitive tasks that you have to do every day. Um, so when it comes to search, we're bringing together all uh, the data that you need into one uh, powerful search experience. That includes bringing in um, data from your other apps like Google Drive or Microsoft SharePoint as well. So, you know, speaking of consolidation, uh, instead of having to do five separate searches across five different tools. Now you can do it uh, in one place uh, with Rovo. And you know, on the right hand side there, you can kind of see how you can filter from different apps. And you know, we're only just getting started with that kind of connector experience. And we are looking to have 50 of the most popular SaaS apps available in our uh, new search by the early next year. Um, then when it comes to the learning side of things, uh, one of the more popular features is around definitions. And that's available in Jira and Confluence. So yeah, if you are a new starter, you're onboarding, you're like, what the heck is this Project Raspberry? Uh, you can just highlight it and you'll get a succinct answer. It'll give you sources to where you can find more information. Uh, and it might also even suggest some follow-up questions you might have. So, you know, how are we going to measure success for this project? Uh, you can open that up. That takes you across to RoboChat. Uh, and now you can kind of begin a back and forth where you're getting contextual answers based on your own knowledge base. Um, and then you can carry on and it decides to something you might need to get access to. Uh, it'll tell you how to do that. And then you can even get Rovo to raise the ticket for you. Skipped ahead a little bit fast there, but in the interest of time, I'll carry on. Um, and so, you know, we know there's people out there using various consumer sort of chat interfaces. Uh, I'm sure most of the people on the call being in the HR world will know that, you know, we can't use that with our sensitive data and things like that. And so, you know, that's what we're solving here with, with RoboChat. Um, so it's 
completely secure. You're using the best LLMs uh, for the job. And, you know, none of that data is, is sort of being used to train any models or, or anything else. We have that zero data retention guarantee, which is really important. And finally, on the agent side of things, uh, yeah, agents are these new virtual teammates that you can go back and forth with, uh, not just in the chat interface, but you can set them up using automations to work for you behind the scenes as well. Um, Robo itself comes with 20 out of the box agents um, that you can just pick up and use. You can also build your own agents uh, specific to your workflows and use cases. So you can give them instructions. You can specify which knowledge areas they have access to, like which confluence sites, things like that, um, and what actions they can do. Can they create Jira issues? Can they you know, create confluence pages? Can they comment on things? Uh, all that good stuff, which is really cool. And then lastly, uh, where we've been working with Onward is around the marketplace agents as well. So. Not only do you get them out of the box, you can create your own ones without even writing any code. Um, a developer ecosystem is also building these agents and adding them to their apps um, as well. So, you know, they can really dive in and do something, you know, really specialized around HR and onboarding uh, and really tailor it to, to a specific use case. So uh, that's been a really fun project this year. But bringing all that together, I guess, you know, we have Rovo, it's world-class enterprise search, it's knowledge at your fingertips, it's this agent building capability, um, plus all the out-of-the-box agents that you get, and, um, you know, extending your, your marketplace apps as well. Um, and so, yeah, it brings it all together in a single package. Uh, as I said, it's GA now, so you can go start the trial uh, at Atlassian.com slash Robo and, and try it out for yourself. Excellent. Uh, uh, thanks for we'll the overview. There in the interest of time. Yeah, probably. A couple of questions. Um, um, the zero data retention policy, I know you quickly covered it, right? Uh, I, um, these days, it's very easy to put a, a wrapper to any of the LLMs or the foundational models and get a chat working. Uh, maybe if you could double click on that zero data retention policy, uh, no customer data is used for training, and, and how do you ensure security and per permissions are carried over? I know in the slide that you're showing, we can connect to Google Drive, Microsoft uh, SharePoint portal and see the results. Results. How does the user security and permissions are maintained? Yeah, great, great. Uh, so two part question there. So, so one uh, around the zero data retention. Um, that's uh, you know a, a, sp a special sort of enterprise agreement that we have with with Open OpenAI in particular, um, where we use their APIs, and so you know. Data does sort of go between Atlassian and OpenAI, but we have a special uh, agreement that none of that data is is even logged for for sort of trust and safety purposes. Um, you know, it's it's completely uh, stateless. Um, and as I mentioned, we also have a mixture of different models. So we we host a bunch of models ourselves now on the Atlassian platform, like from Google Gemini and Anthropic and others. And um, all of that happens sort of within our Atlassian cloud and and our account and and none of that stays with the model. Um, it's always, uh, yeah. And so, so I guess the next question is, how does it actually work then with, with your organization knowledge if we're not fine tuning these models? Um, basically, we have uh, sort of a sophisticated sort of search index. So we, we can search across all your data really quickly. We can get the relevant chunks. We pass that through to the model uh, in the context of that request, and then we get the answer. Um, but none of that None of that information stays with the model. Um, that's how it works. And then on the user permission side, obviously that's a huge uh, importance for us. And so um, what it, what you have to do is actually to use, say, a Google Drive in the search, each user has to authorize their connection to Google. Uh, and when they do that, we can map your Google account with your Atlassian account. And, you know, whenever we're indexing data, we, we sort of, you know, map that across as well. And so we know um, yeah, what data you should have access to and, you know, we'll filter out or yeah, filter out anything, you know, that wouldn't, that you don't have access to when generating an answer for you as well. So, so it's entirely, you know, you and someone else at your company may get an entirely different answer from Rovo. Uh, and that's actually okay because, you know, they might have access to a bunch of documents that, that you don't have to access to. And so, 
and that's got how it works. Got it. Excellent. Excellent. Um, you know, it's amazing to see the progress of Atlas in Rovo from, you know, that Team24 uh, announcement in Vegas to in, in the five to six months time, right? Like, uh, uh, you know, 50 plus connectors, 20 plus agents, uh, you know, uh, security, etc. For customers who are looking to get started, what's your, you know, guidance or, or, or um, recommendation, if you will, like, you know, maybe a, like a crawl, walk, run type of approach. What are some of the ways that customer can get started, test the waters and then go to the next complex step? Yeah, for sure. And I think, yeah, it is, it can be a bit overwhelming if you think, you know, going to the, the far end of the spectrum is you can, you know, use our developer platform Forge and write code like you guys have uh, at Onward and, and build an AI agent. Like, obviously don't start there um i think the best way is by yeah just turning on a few turning on atlassian intelligence for for some of your your products or some of your sites um and you know get started with just searching jira in natural language get started with getting confluence page summaries or or you know the usual ai tools around improve my writing you know summarize this for me you know suggest a title um, all of those features are really good. And from there, um, you know, they just kind of get more and more powerful and you can use natural language to generate automation rules. Um, you know, it's in Atlassian Analytics and, and everywhere else. And so sort of do that to, to get a, um, a bit of comfort with it, I think. And then, yeah, definitely, I'd say check out Rovo. Um, you know, a lot of the power of that is 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 in the search. And so that's quite easy for anyone to to sort of get up and running with. Um, and then that kind of leads you into the chat and then, you know, from the chat, you can sort of start playing around with agents. So there is, there is kind of like a nice gradual curve that you can sort of look at for adoption. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you, Adam. Let's continue on the next, um, um, section here. Let me share my screen. We have Carolyn Adams from Modus Create, um, um, you know, I've known Carolyn for almost like uh, close to two years now. Uh, excellent um, um, leader who can break down the complexities to move towards action, right? Like how do you take that vision and take it to the execution piece of it? Because it, if we do not execute, we don't realize the benefit of the technology investment. Um, you know, um, some of, like, you know, the key to that successful implementation is understanding the customer user requirements, translating into, you know, configuration, custom development, and realizing the benefits of it. And in the process, keeping an eye on the change management where users really adopt the system and get the value of it. So, Carolyn, eager to get to, you know, to listen to your talk track. Uh, walk us through the pain points and, and some of the keywords that you have already coined in the onboarding space. Uh, walk us through it. Absolutely. Happy to do that. So I want to start uh, by just calling out this spooky figure that CFOs and the budgets conscious care about. Poor onboarding is costing businesses billions to the tune of $900 billion in 2023 according to the Work Institute's retention report. This number reflects the immense loss in productivity and the cost of replacing staff. Staggering, right? So what if I told you that you could cut that cost in half simply by standardizing onboarding? And what if you could enhance that and cut that cost even further by adopting AI tools like Rovo? Next slide, please. According to the Society for HR Service Management, this simple act of creating standards for onboarding increases user adoption and engagement, leading to higher productivity. This doesn't just delight new employees, but the entire organization that benefits from it. Picture a production of your favorite film. There's so many people involved in the making of a movie that go unseen. If they didn't know the role to play or have instructions for what they were supposed to do, they'd be left in a disorganized mess. And with AI 
and onboarding solutions, much in the same way, everyone has a part to play in onboarding a new employee from the hiring manager to the HR business partner, to the IT team, and even the new hire. In fact, that new hire is the star of the show that holds so much promise to help the organization. So why not roll out the red carpet for them by ensuring that they don't just have a standardized onboarding, but one tailored to their role? With AI, that's possible. That's the kind of process we're talking about and the kind of welcome all our employees deserve. Next slide, please. Modus Create helps your organization take full advantage of the Atlassian tools you're already paying for to create this spectacular experience. Whether it's Jira, Confluence, Loom, or the new Rovo, from the moment someone is marked as hired in whatever tool you're using to track talent, we integrate that system to trigger a web of events and orchestrate a fantastical onboarding experience. We also do this for the employee's first day through their first 90 days, familiarizing them with the tools they'll be using to complete their job functions from the beginning, including work management and knowledge management, as well as discovery of that information using Rovo. Excellent, excellent. Um, couple of questions, Carolyn. Uh, I know, you know, each of these, um, require customer uh, requirements and coming up with an implementation. Can you give some like even at like a t-shirt size engagement models? Like say if I am a customer, I would like mm -hmm. to get started on uh, uh, HR service management or, or the, the onboarding uh, automation. Uh, mm -hmm. Give us how would you, you know, um, get started? What type of um, um, you know, um, um, requirements, if you will, to make it easy for the customer? Absolutely. So I would get started on your own. You don't absolutely need a partner to get started on your own to understand what's available to you. So get started by creating a new project using the HR service management template. Download and install a few apps that you think might help you, whether that's Onward, uh, Onward's apps like OnRamp and OnLink to integrate and automate some of the flow to Jira miscellaneous workflow extensions to extend those workflows into more powerful tools. These applications, this ecosystem is there to extend and enhance the services that you're using today. Um, now, what you're going to find is that there's a lot there and there's a lot of options. There's a lot you can customize and that can be overwhelming. That's where a partner comes in. And that's where someone like Modus has the ability to help translate what it is that you're missing, those gaps, find those gaps and turn them into a solution that helps you take laptops from being a month late to being there before the employee ever starts. Got it, got it. That makes sense. Um, I, and and to to like you know imagine a customer environment, right? Very few have to start with a clean sheet of paper. Most of the time, it's a legacy migration, like moving from a legacy service management system mm -hmm. to a Jira service management. Uh, give us some uh, you know um, guidance on how a customer should approach a migration project. Oh, gosh, migration projects are tough. Um, I, I won't sugarcoat that. They're not simple and straightforward, as you might think. Uh, a lot of people think you just click a button and it goes. But because you're actually moving from data center, which is a completely separate product from cloud, there are nuances and differences that you have to ascertain. So you've got to make sure you do your app assessments um, to make sure you know what's compatible, what has a migration path, you need to fully understand those paths. And what you need to do is you need to map out the journey that it's going to take to get your data from an existing tool into the new tool, whether that's uh, Jira service management, Jira software, or Confluence, it doesn't matter. You're going to have to map that data somehow. And so you need to document that process. Got it. Got it. Excellent. Thank you, Carolyn. 
me continue here. Just a quick overview, and I think it's a summary of uh, what uh, Carolyn mentioned. Um, when, it, when it comes to HR service management and the workflow that gets associated, we see it's not just the responsibility of the HR teams. Uh, and in fact, when it comes to onboarding, even though HR is responsible for the activity, like onboarding the new hire and setting up for success, there is almost heavy dependency to the rest of the organization. For example, HR is dependent on IT for access, laptop, uh, user provisioning, etc. HR is dependent on legal for con like you know um, uh, any contract execution, IP assignment execution, etc. HR is dependent on finance for setting up payroll, setting up uh, new credit cards, etc. Marketing for sending a welcome gift or or uh, any type of a swag. So you, you, as simple as even if may it may look like onboarding is a bunch of checklist, when we break it down, it it almost touches the entire organization, and and for the new hire. It's almost a view into what is the customers like. So, what is the organization culture, right? Because, like uh, you know, a classic good example that Jennifer and Carol mentioned that hey, you know, laptop used to take a month. Now it is even before the start date, right? Like the new hire that sets a very good experience for the new hire to give the uh, the insight that hey, this organization has good technology maturity and also cares for the employee's time and do not waste or wait for that laptop to arrive. Like as simple as that, but makes a profound impact for the new hire to, to you know, have a very good experience. So to, you know, start off with, it's, it's, it's not just checklist, right? And also uh, most of the time uh, when you, we, we go into organizations that are global in nature and, and have multiple departments, et cetera, the onboarding experience or even processes are completely disjointed. You know, albeit there are some, you know, um, um, country le level restrictions or compliance, et cetera. But let's say, for example, a developer, right? At a high level, a developer getting onboarded in a specific department, specific location should have more or less the same experience anywhere else, right? And, and, and the challenges is, you know, ad hoc processes are, do not have a, um, a personalization to it. I call it as the, the, the tug of war between standardization and personalization. You try to make everything standardized, everything, you know, uh, compliance based, you totally miss out on the personalization, how to find that right balance. Right. And, and, and finally, workflows, right? Very easy to define a workflow, but, uh, you know, uh, you know, provisioning a user, uh, creating an email, ordering a laptop. At the end of it, everything is a service request. And how do we, you know, address that service request with the right level of automation and AI? Right. And, and, and for us to look at this next generation deployment, what are some of the considerations? One, you know, communication portal. I think this is where JSM portal really shines, right? When somebody is hired, when somebody is new, how, how to make sure that very easy for them to ask a question, how to make easy for them to communicate and broadcast and share information. Um, uh, when when there is a new hire type of a request, can we have pre-built templates? So that way it's guided, it's a recipe based to make sure that, okay, if you are onboarding a salesperson, here is a, a onboarding set of tasks for the salesperson. If I'm onboarding a contractor or a contingent worker, here are here is the uh, onboarding task for the contingent worker. So making it pre-built, making it easy for the organization to, you know, uh, get, get that automation done then task creation right like you know not just like a checklist but one step more meaning uh, you know create a user provisioning request and assign it to the it team uh, create um, 
uh, you know, credit card provisioning request assigned it to the finance team. How do we make sure that it's not just a checklist that somebody needs to complete, but can I have the governance? Can I have the approval? Can I have the delegation? Can I have the escalation to it? Again, these are not new. JSM as a platform contains all these functionalities. You need to you know, get that right configuration and use this re re respective features for HR related use cases. Then obviously AI and AI agents. As um, 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 Adam highlighted, right? You can start off with that find functionality. Like for example, if I am a new hire, I will have a lot of questions on, hey, what is your relocation policy? When will be my expenses paid off? Um, um, uh, uh, what is my maternity leave policy? What is my, like, you know, a lot of newbie questions. And, and we don't want the new hire to feel uh, he or, or hesitant to ask these questions, right? Like now, if we have that type of a find functionality in Rovo, if I can search, and that search inherently act, have that security and the role-based permissions built into it. And with confidence, I can go ahead and search, look at the leave policy, understand it. If I have a question, I can open a ticket and get it answered. Then comes the automation piece of it, right? And that automation comes from having a good integration between the systems particularly for HR-related uh, use cases, you need a good native frictionless integration between your HR system and your service management system. I know Carolyn highlighted the fact that, you know, Workday and Jira service management, right? So when somebody is hired in Workday, how can the service management can easily identify that new hire information and get that automation going? That is crucial, right? Like with that, you avoid double entry, you avoid fat fingering, and you avoid any duplicate entries. And as simple as that, right? Like to, to uh, um, Jennifer's point on laptop, one of the common but also makes a lasting impact is, you know, when you have the new hire and the name is not misspelled. And you know when 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 and that sends a good uh, you know uh, message that people can att pay attention to the details and have that good experience. And finally, analytics, right? Like the SLAs. Like you know, if I have a order laptop request, do I have the SLA that I'm maintaining it? And if there are any issues associated with it, can I look at what is causing it and how can I improve the process? So just a high level overview, hope this is useful. Um, now, if you have any questions, feel free to put it in the chat window and we will quickly address it. All right, I know there is a question from Ryan. Um, I think it's related to a role. We answered that Adam. one already. Adam answered oh. that one. Okay, perfect. Perfect. But yeah, I guess just to answer it again, the, the answer is yes. And so like specific Jira projects, uh, things like that. Um, when you're creating your agents, you can yeah, narrow down the, the knowledge sources. Got it. Got it. Excellent. Excellent. Awesome. Thank you, Adam. Okay. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you, Carolyn. Um, and, and if there are any questions, feel free to reach out. We'll be happy to, to uh, provide our feedback. And um, we look forward to seeing you all in our next webinar. And, and once again, happy Halloween uh, for those who celebrate. And we look forward to the next one. Thanks, everyone.